Louis Spicoli. I didn't. I barely said Louis Spicoli. Louis Spicoli. <laughs> uh, I, I I liked. I love. I actually loved Louis Spicoli. He was a great kid. Had a ton of potential. He came all the way out to Wichita, Kansas from California when we were doing TV out there with uh, Burt Prentice, and he wanted to just get an opportunity. I introduced him to Burt. Burt wanted to use him. Uh, that promotion closed down before he had a chance, and I worked with him in ECW, actually. But he was one of those kids who loved the business and got caught up in a lot of things that uh, we all get caught up in at times, and it's a shame, but he was a great wrestler. He's a great performer. And he, he, you, you know, the guys who love it, you know, the guys who are just in it for whatever reason they're in it. And Louie loved it. So, uh, yeah, it's a shame. Hmm. Uh, Bobby Blaze. Bobby Blaze is another guy who loves the business and from uh, uh, Kentucky. Didn't look like much, but man, when he got in the ring, he, he could work and could tell a story. Another fellow, nicest guy in the world, loved the business, to have a good time and go up and down the road. Great guy. Uh, number three is Ox Baker. You no, know, Ox could sing uh, opera, and he painted his toes red. Yeah, he painted his toenails red, and he would be in the uh, shower. Op- Oh, I've jinxed it. I've, I, I, I jinxed, he was a clown. He was great. He was a, he was a funny guy. You son of a gun. You should have never said went five minutes, 15 minutes. I know. Before. I know I shouldn't have done yeah. it. I just as, as soon as yeah. I was like, God, you're well, going to get me, though. So he painted yeah. his toenails red. Yeah. Ox painted his, his toenails red. He was he was a gimmick from start to finish. He really was a lot of fun. What a very what a really nice – you would look at him as such a – such an evil-looking character. He was a perfect character, but he was also the perfect. Uh, couldn't couldn't always walk and chew gum at the same time. But you know, he uh, he he had the distinction of having two people, I believe, die in the ring or afterwards. And uh, you know, not 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 due to anything he did, but uh, they gave all the credit to him, which is great. You know, to have that hard punch and he would have the left hand and he would. He wouldn't bring the arm up. He would just bring the large hand down. And, and he cut a great promo. Fantastic. But a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with him, too. Was he in a Kurt Russell film? Yeah. Uh, Living Down in New York or New York, something like that. Well, Escape from New York. Escape from New York, there you go. yes. yes. It, was, it was bugging me, that one. Um, well, he, he was the guy, real quick, he was the guy who gave uh, the grapple I was speaking about with, uh, about, uh, with Jake Roberts, who invented the DDT. They were riding together one time, and, and Ox just said, you know, on your promo, you, you ought to say, hey, when you're a great wrestler, they don't call you a great wrestler. They call you the grappler. Beat me if you can. And I thought, wow. And Lynn says, yeah. And Lynn used that grappler, used that as his tagline at the time after that. <laughs> uh, Henry O. Godwin. Henry O. Godwin is another guy. Just, oh, man, you mentioned some good guys. I had a lot of fun with him, too. Big, burly, uh, unremarkably strong, uh, but one of the nicest guys in the world if he's on your side. If he's not, you'd better run, be able to run fast. But great guy. I had a lot of fun with him. And Phineas, by the way. Uh, Did you ever notice the whole BSK thing and everyone getting the tattoos at the time? Uh, yeah, yeah. Phineas has it behind his ear. I think Henry has it on his arm and Taker has it on his stomach and Yoko had it, uh, don't know where, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it was obvious. Uh, it was, you had the click BSK, but once again, and I got along with, I thought both crews pretty good. I just, I was never in a position not to get along with anybody. So, mm-hmm. and I was fine with that. Yeah. Steve Kern. Uh, Steve Kern, great guy. Love doing FCW with him. Uh, I learned a lot from Steve. I sure did. And uh, <laughs> I, I, well, no, I mean, I, I, I won't forget a lot of lessons I learned from Steve. <laughs> it was, it was eye opening. Is uh, is always the smirk when you say I learned a lot, and you can always well, sort of guess what you're going on about. If you do, you do. If you don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Killer Kyle. 
damn, another guy who uh, one of one of those guys that was always dependable, loved the business, uh, intimidating if you didn't know him. If you didn't know him, he could he could give you a look, or or he could um, give you that death stare without even realizing. So, uh, but I enjoyed him, and Cornette brought him in to be his big bubba in Smoky Mountain. And I can understand why, because he had he had potential. I think he was just happy being a homebody. He was just happy staying home. He had a family. Uh, Kevin Kelly. I like. <laughs> Kevin Kelly helped me more than I could ever explain or repay when we were doing voiceovers. Uh, he's been he's he's been a very good friend for the past few years, and uh, offered advice, suggestions, and offered just a just an ear sometimes. And when you don't have a lot of people like that, it's good to have one that you know you can call up and say, "Hey, so uh, there's a yellow toad in the middle of the forest. He's crying." And then he goes, oh, yeah, and then what's next? Hmm. There's, there's a joke in there, but it's too long to tell. I ain't going to tell. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, next one, uh, Teddy Hart. Wow, wasted potential. Teddy was a talented guy who told me once, he said, you know, you tell me less is more. No, more is more. Yeah, but no. <laughs> no, you're not getting it, Ted. It's how and what you do, not how much you do. It's in between stuff. And I saw him two years ago, and he said, now I know what you mean. But he's 40-something years old. Uh, he didn't understand how to play the game. He didn't understand how to communicate. He didn't understand because he had it all. His vision was his vision. He wasn't going to stray from that. I understand. I totally understand. We're young. Youth is wasted on the young. And you don't get that until you turn whatever you turn, whatever age it is. Finally, when it comes to you, some people never comes to you, but I, you'll have an epiphany and you go, wow, dude, I was stupid. Not only stupid, but I should have been dead. And that's for Teddy, man. He should have been dead, but, you know, he's still there. And he just, I don't know if he gets it now, but he needs to. Hmm. Uh, you actually mentioned this guy before, and I can't believe you did, Tiger Conway Jr. Yeah. Well, Tiger Conway Jr. was from Houston. I grew up watching him and his dad. And when I broke in, uh, it was Tiger, Chavo Guerrero, Manny Fernandez. They were like my mentors, and I was their rookie. That's what they called me when I broke in. Hey, rookie. So I did uh, – I rode with them. I went out places with them. I did things with them. It's like, holy Jesus. But, but Tiger was always a guy that um, – would snatch me up and say, come on, kid, we're going. So you great guy, though. I mean, for that time, he grew up in the territory system. He knew what it was like and knew where to steer me. So, Sean Stasiak. Um, Sean Stasiak is one of the guys that baffled me because he really had a great look. Um, he could move. He was an amateur wrestler. He loved the business. But what happens to a lot of us, I, I, you, I'm putting my name right in there with them. We get in the business and uh, we have ideas and we have a vision. And all of a sudden, you meet reality and you go, whoa, it's, it's not what I thought it was. And then um, if you Everybody come over and sit you down and explain the facts of life and professional wrestling, then you're only going to learn by what the guys do to you outwardly in front of everybody else. Uh, and that's not the way to learn. You need somebody to take you aside and say, kid, don't be a dumbass. Just relax. Let the guys fuck with you and, and, and take it. Don't sell. Don't sell. Uh, but Sean sold. And uh, he, he, he did things that were young, dumb, and just stupid. But I, I like Sean. Sean means well, too. Sean's a, a really good guy. Uh, he just needed to get his head together back then. Uh, did he? Um, oh, did you ever catch him with the supposed tape recorder? 
that you'd hide in the bag? Uh, no comment. 